Hello, welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. We're in Foundry VTT version 12, although what we're going to look at today is applicable to version 11 as well. And we're looking at a module. It's called Automated Conditions uh, for 5e. So this is D&D specific. Uh, so this is my test world, obviously. Again, I am in version 12, but it does work in version 11. It just has been updated for version 12. And as you can see, it's the only module I've got active. Uh, it doesn't rely on anything else. I don't need to integrate it with anything else. But what does it do? So I've got a, just a little uh, collection of people here where I've added some conditions on. Yes, before you point out, we know that zombies are immune to poison. <laughs> but I've made this one prone, this one poisoned, this one's dodging, uh, this one's invisible, uh, and this boar has got fatigue. So these are the conditions you set on creatures right click on their token assign their status effects so this is core foundry D, D game system stuff okay so we can apply those various conditions as i said i've got you know one that's prone there and i've got sorryman in the middle so what does this module actually do uh so it can tie into things like midi qol but we don't need to use that at all. Uh, and when I'm looking at some of my games where I want less automation, especially for newer players who are learning the mechanics, this could be really, really useful. I'm going to demonstrate for you. So Sorryman is going to, uh, I've got him selected. I'm going to target this zombie that is prone. Come on, Sorryman, let's pull you up there. Uh, in fact, let's let's slap his quarter staff down here on the uh on the hot bar on the macro bar down here it's gonna be easier so sorry man is going to attack that zombie this is core version 12 function of course uh, by clicking on his weapon i get my options now when i click on attack this is what it does so i've still got my three buttons as player as dm to choose from but it has highlighted the advantage button so it is prompting me to go, oh, that's right, I've got advantage on this because my target is prone. So, of course, I can make that roll. Uh, surprise, surprise, he hit. <laughs> Hitting a prone zombie is probably the easiest thing in the world. And then, of course, I can go on and do my damage. Uh, it's suggesting that this should be a normal attack roll. Uh, and we can go through and we can apply that as normal. Beautiful. So it's not actually changing anything anything it's just giving us a little prompt let's try it on a poison zombie now you you will know what you're expecting um you know if you play a lot of dnd you'll go well hang on a minute there shouldn't be any advantage disadvantage based on the fact that the target so it's going to go with normal the target is poisoned not the attacker so it's going to go normal uh, we can go for dodging it's a normal attack Okay. Now, what you need to bear in mind is dodging isn't covered under the base stuff. Okay, So, obviously, dodging has an effect for the zombie. They're less likely to be hit, but it doesn't affect Sorryman's attack roll in this instance. What about invisible, though? Let's try that. Uh, clear my chat. Try and keep it a bit clean for you. Oops, a daisy. Can't click. It's recommending that this should be at disadvantage. So I think for for newer players in um, in less automated games, this is a really useful. So uh, just hovering over it, automated conditions target grants disadvantage because it's invisible. Yeah, and actually at disadvantage we missed. Uh, we can attack this one that's fatigued. This boar up here. normal attack we wouldn't expect that to affect the attacker but we can reverse this okay so let's select our boar and attack sorryman instead okay bring our boar up over here and we're going to do our tusk attack we're going to do that attack it's suggesting because of the level of fatigue we're carrying and i can hover over it is exhaustion level four disadvantage for the attacker so it's going to prompt me on what i should be doing or rather what I what roles I should be making based on the condition. Slam from this one. It's invisible. So it should have advantage. It's prompting me for that. Lovely, isn't it? Um, we, can, we should be able to see that with this poisoned one as, as well. Excuse me, a little hiccup there. <laughs> and again, 
disadvantage because the attacker is poisoned. Remember, Sorryman didn't get advantage or disadvantage attacking the zombie, but the zombie gets disadvantage because it's the one that's poisoned. Uh, and finally, we can see that, of course, with this zombie here who is prone. It should be at disadvantage. Sorryman got advantage attacking it. It gets disadvantage attacking back. That's what it does. Um, it's it's really nice and simple. It's nice and easy. It just gives that little prompt. I think, especially for the new, I'm going to say it again, <laughs> especially for those new players, I think that's really nice to remind them and point them and hint at them. And go, oh right, okay, yes. Uh, and also for new DMs, in fairness, to remind them as like, oh yeah, I forgot they're invisible and so forth. So I need to adjust because of that. Could be really really useful. So this is, you saw my, uh, my my mod list, it's the only one that's actually in there apart from the core and the 5th edition game engine. Um, we've got some settings though. So there's a few different things you can play with here to change it. Now there is one of them that talks about expanded conditions. When checked, it will attempt to automate some extra conditions like dodging and hiding. Let's put that on. Okay, this one is dodging. So select Sorryman, and we'll try and attack that one that's dodging. We'll make our attack roll. It's now telling us that that's at disadvantage. It wasn't before. Okay, so we can extend those. Now, I'm not sure why they're in a separate section. I, I get there's a logic, obviously. Um, the Lonely Bugbear, I believe, is the one who wrote this module. Obviously, some logic behind why that's not default done. Uh, and it might be because people homebrew and things like that and make it a bit more flexible. Uh, but yeah, it works beautifully. Uh, so arm, armor proficiency and equipment stealth disadvantage. So if you're wearing the wrong type of armor. Now, I'm not going to bother with that one myself because I kind of police my character sheets anyway. I know who can and can't wear armor. And if they find heavy armor and somebody says, oh, I'm going to put it on. If I'm not sure, I'm going to be checking their character sheet to see if they can use that or not. But I'm going to have a pretty good idea. So I'm not going to need that, but you can. Um, armor proficiencies and spells. Uh, enforce, but possibly warn again might be useful. So you can do nothing. Um, warn. If the actor lacks proficiency in the equipped piece of armor it notifies that they're not able to cast spells. So you can override it because it's only going to be a warning rather than enforced. Um, but again, if you've got somebody's wizard who's decided that they want to wear full plate mail armor and they don't have the right things, you're probably aware of that. I'm not, I'm not sure I would use that one, but it's there. Absolutely, it's there. You can leave it on. Uh, on the chances of it will never come up, but <laughs> if it does, <laughs> somebody gets sneaky. Sometimes people buy... Um, chain mail and they think they've got a mail shirt yeah there's quite a big difference between those two bits <laughs> like, oh well if I get this one um, range attacks automation advantage disadvantage um, based on distance hmm interesting may or may not use it I mean personally I'm going to be using more than likely be using combat grid to give me that information um, We've got exhaustion automation, well, which was automatically switched on. We've already looked at that with our bore. Uh, encumbrance. Right. When checked, it will automatically process the variant encumbrance rules. So the game master must also select the settings in the game system, of course, so that they are, they are matching. Um, so you can use that. So if you're over encumbered, it's going to apply those penalties to you. That might be something that's really important to you in your games. I know a lot of DMs are very loose with encumbrance and either don't use it at all or, or use it very vaguely because it can get a bit mechanics. It can kind of slow everything up a bit. So some people just go, I'm not using it at all. Uh, I try to use common sense. Yes, you found you find 10,000 gold pieces. How are you going to move that? Because that's not fitting in your pockets. <laughs> and uh, if anybody's smart in the party it's like tensars floating disc thank you very much that's the only time that spell really ever gets used is for transporting heavy loot um to an extent of course um so we've got some targeting options here about from the source do nothing enforce targeting um again you know you can come in and look at these if none of none or multiple targets selected when the user rolls attack damage it will do nothing so yeah, if Sorryman targets, you know, all of these, 
it's like well hang on a minute i don't know what to do there you can get it to um yeah you you can get it to just do nothing instead um enforce targeting it says cancel the roll and ask for the targets before rolling again so that might be a useful one so in theory and i haven't tried this but doing it live uh, with multiple selected if soriman tries to i've got an error no selected or assigned actor could be found to target because i've got too many selected if i select just the boar oh hang on a minute i didn't have soriman selected let me check that again <laughs> professional at work uh oh it is going to try and do it oh it has attacked all of them okay okay so that's not quite what i was expecting interestingly he attacked himself as well because i accidentally also clicked him okay that's not quite doing what i thought it was going to do um if none or multiple so let's make sure we've got none selected Yeah, it's just doing the roll. So this doesn't appear, and bearing in mind, I'm just looking at it right now. Some of you may well know. Um, this doesn't appear to actually be doing much for me. Now, again, I don't have all the automations and stuff in place. I've only got this in. Uh, it doesn't specifically say that it relates to those. Um, but yeah, that doesn't seem to be making much difference. That's okay. Uh, and you've also got keybinds override the calculations. So in other words, if you do a shift click, it will go, oh, I'm going to roll with advantage regardless of what the button says. Um, so you can have those keybinds. So if you've got players who kind of know a bit more what they're doing, brilliant. Let them crack on. For the others, it's going to give them that they'll get access to the prompt. Uh, I don't think I'd use that. I think it'd have the prompt on for everybody. Um, but there we go. So it's, it's a very simple little module, but it really does add that little supporting thing. Now, if you're doing, you know, if you're doing massive automation, you're using all of MIDI QOL to its full extent and things. Uh, again, version 12, is it, I think it is, taking into account those conditions anyway. It's been a while since I've tested MIDI QOL to that extent, and I will have to go and do that and make sure... If not, this is the module that ties in with it to say, well, hang on a minute, you need to take into account that they are poisoned, etc. I'm pretty sure MIDI QOL does that anyway. What we need to bear in mind is when we automate and we go, oh, I've chucked in defreds conditions, I've chucked in this, I've chucked in that. Some of those automations, such as defreds, are feeding into MIDI QOL to cover a whole bunch of these conditions as well. So... It may be an either or case. Do you want to use this? Do you want to use D threads? Do you want to use Chris's? Do you want whatever, whatever it might be? It's just, just one option. This is not a particularly powerful option, but for a base game with no automation, um, I would ideally, I think, want this because of it's a nice little prompt for my players just to remind them. Yeah, don't forget that you have advantage here. Also, for the GMs, okay, new GMs, it's a little prompt. It's like, oh, that's right, my monster has to roll at disadvantage because of that git did that thing. I think that combined with defreds for the all of the other effects would be a really nice, uh, a really nice combination to have without automating. Just having those in as prompts, having those effects on, and being able to put them up. Anyway, I'm going to stop rambling now. Uh, do you use this? Is this one you use? Let us know. Have I missed anything critical? Because I always do. There's always, there's always somebody says, did you know you can do? Like, Brilliant. Put it in the comments. We want to know. Uh, thank you very much. You take care and I will see you in the next one.